Okay, hi, my name is Natalie and I am an occupational therapy student at Cleveland State University. Today I'm going to be talking about different ways for student veterans to help manage their pain. So before we get started, I want to introduce my co-host. This is PJ. Hey guys, my name is PJ. Um, I'm also an occupational therapy student in the master's program at CSU along with Natalie. A um, little fun fact about me, I have a bunny and I'm teaching it to do a backflip and I'm also an ice cream enthusiast. So those are <laughs> things about me. All right, so let's see. Okay, so we will start with what is occupational therapy. So occupational therapy focuses on helping people do all of the things that they want to do and need to do in their daily lives. So OT's main goal is really to get people back to doing what is meaningful to them and to help improve quality of life. So for those who experience pain, it can really impact so many areas of your life and prevent you from doing all of the things that you want to do and need to do. So for students especially, pain has been shown to lead to poorer outcomes in college performance, and it can really disrupt a lot of areas. So like we said, PJ and I are students. So PJ, can you think of any areas in your life that would be more challenging if you were experiencing pain? Uh, yeah, I feel like kind of everything in my life would be more challenging experiencing pain. So like a few a few of the things that I'm interested in are, I love doing active stuff, like doing sports and playing sports with my friends. And I know that anytime I have pain, it just really puts a, I mean, I just don't want to, I don't want to do anything active. I want to just kind of lay in my bed. Um, I do a lot of schoolwork and I know when I'm in pain, it's tough to get myself to, even though like classes on zoom now because of COVID, you just have a hard time paying attention, have a hard time focusing. Um, and then, yeah, seeing like friends and family and stuff like that, you don't have the desire to have a social life either and kind of it kind of affects everything, kind of makes you just want to sit there and not be in pain for the most yeah, part. Yeah, exactly. It makes you not want to do all the things that you need to do. Um, so that's why you can really see like all of the areas that pain affects and why that this is such an important area to address. And OT can play a huge role in this area by teaching different coping strategies and different tools that you can use to help cope with this pain. So that is really what we will be discussing today. So before we get into the coping tools, just a disclaimer that the information presented today just outlined some healthy options for, for managing pain. It's not meant to replace currently prescribed medical regimen um, you should contact your physician or healthcare provider with any questions or before starting new health prom promoting practices. So these are our learning objectives. So like I said, we'll be learning about different pain management tools, how to change your cognitive thoughts. Um, we'll be learning about different relaxation techniques, how to pace activities so to help minimize pain. Um, the benefits of physical activity and then sleep and how important that is to help manage pain. And then we will end with some community resources and what you can do to help yourself in this area. Okay, so we will be talking about thought processes. So we kind of mentioned how complex pain really is and how it impacts how a person thinks, behaves, and feels and it can really create this cycle of negative thoughts. So some of the thoughts that occur in those with pain are thoughts like, I can't do this anymore, I feel broken, nothing can help me, this is my pain and this is how my life is now, and just feeling hopeless in this area. And then these thoughts can then lead to negative emotions, so feeling depressed, anxious, angry, or scared. And then these emotions and thoughts can impact how you behave. So we kind of mentioned this earlier, you can isolate yourself from other people in your life. Um, you can stop doing the activities that you like to do. Maybe it's harder to go to class. Um, maybe you're not going to work. Uh, another behavior is resting in response to pain. So just like PJ mentioned, not doing anything at all, which really worsens pain in the long run too. So you can see how this cycle just can continuously repeat itself. So we can do something about this. So you can change your thoughts and your behaviors. 
to change your awareness of pain and to develop better coping skills, even if that pain does stay the same. So the first step to do this is to keep track of these negative thoughts and feelings that you have associated with your pain. So just become more aware of these thoughts and you can write them down in a journal or keep some kind of thought log on how you are feeling. The second step is to change your behaviors. So get involved in activities that you enjoy, start doing more physical activity. You can use relaxation techniques, pacing yourself in daily activities, and we will be discussing these further in a little bit. Then the third step is challenging these thoughts and beliefs. Um, uh, so changing the assumption of I can't do anything by recognizing what you were able to do. So focusing on accomplishments, what you are still able to do in your life and shifting the perspective to kind of see the greater picture that you may still be in pain, but you are in control of this pain and you can still do activities in your life. So overall with changing your thought processes, you wanna have a more balanced, adaptive and helpful thought patterns to improve your behaviors and emotions. So now we'll be talking a little bit about um, the behaviors that you can change as well. So first are the relaxation techniques. So we know that stress intensifies pain so by doing relaxation techniques, you can help to reduce your stress to in turn reduce pain. It can also reduce muscle tension and muscle tension has been shown to increase the perception of pain. So it really helps on two different levels. Um, these are some of the relaxation techniques. So before we go into them, PJ, have you heard of any of these or have you used any of these and found them helpful? Uh, yeah, I've heard of most of them and I've used a couple uh, meditation, guided imagery, the deep breathing or diaphragmatic breathing and yoga. I think I've, I've each done I've done each of those a little bit just through some of our classes in our program. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I've really done on my own, like on purpose, was the deep breathing stuff. And that's usually only in replacement of if I like stub my toe or bang my knee really hard or something, instead yeah. of yelling something, I'll just like take a big breath and then let it out. And that usually helps the pain significantly. Yeah. Um, yoga, I, I'm not flexible enough for yoga. So that yeah. usually increases my pain personally. But yeah, yeah I, I am excited to learn more about uh, a few of these, though, that I don't know much about. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really good ones in here. Um, the first one, progressive muscle relaxation. So that involves tightening and relaxing different muscle groups throughout the body. And you can combine this with breathing and it really helps to slow the heart rate, slow the blood or decrease the blood pressure and just help you feel more calm. Autogenic training is similar to this. So you focus on feelings of warmth and heaviness within the body to help yourself relax. Guided imagery, you can do this through listening to different scripts and you focus on pleasant images to help replace those stressful feelings. Um, we have meditation, so that's helpful in clearing the mind of thoughts and sometimes the mental chatter that you have, just the thoughts running through your head, it really helps to become more aware of the presence and try to get rid of some of those negative thoughts um, and that can help you cope with your pain as well. Um, diaphragmatic breathing is also deep breathing. That's a really, really good one to do throughout the day. So instead of just breathing from the chest, you really like breathe. So it fills your stomach with air. Um, so that is really helpful in reducing stress and it also releases serotonin so it can improve your mood. So it's a good one to use. Um, and then yoga and Tai Chi. Some people like these, some people find more pain in them. <laughs> um, but they both combine the mind and body with breathing techniques and body movements. So that's another one that can help calm and relax the body. So I will say that I think yoga seems to work for 99% of people. And that I think it's more user error when I'm doing it than a problem <laughs> with yoga. So I probably need to take a few yoga classes and figure that out. Could be. <laughs> All right. 
So we will be talking about pacing. So this is important to pace yourself when completing activities. So it's important to take breaks before the pain starts and to slowly build up and do more over time as you can tolerate it. So another example if, of pacing is if you know that you have a really physically demanding activity that's coming up, instead of doing it all at once and really worsening that pain, you can set time aside in the day to do little chunks of it at a time instead of overexerting yourself and pushing yourself too hard. Next, we have exercise and physical activity. So this is great because it releases natural endorphins to help relieve pain and then improve mood. Being inactive can often worsen pain, so it's really important to get the body up and get it moving. So as students, we spend a lot of time sitting and that can be, it can be really challenging at times. So PJ, do you have, um, do you find yourself having a hard time sitting throughout the day during classes? And is there anything that you do to help yourself feel better? Yeah, yeah, I get so antsy during classes. I, it's nothing that the teachers are doing wrong or anything. It's just so hard to keep people engaged for hours on end. Um, so mm -hmm. I really like how, at least in our program, they'll give us like a 10 minute break about every hour or so. And during that time, I, uh, every time basically, I have to get up and if we're at school or something, I'll a lot of times go outside and either walk around somewhere or kind of just jog the block or something, just kind of get my blood flowing a little bit and re-energize my body and my mind. And that, that helps so much just in terms of my attention span and kind of how engaged I can be in the class after that. Yeah, definitely. I really appreciate those movement breaks in class too you can just feel really stiff and sore sitting there all the time. So that's like something that can be really helpful is yeah, getting up and stretching, walking, if you need to stand um, and if it's virtual, turn off your camera and stand and walk around. Um, and then just making it a habit to walk more, even if it's 10 minutes of walking a day, it's really good to get your body moving and to help manage that pain better. And then with all of this, like we were talking about, it's important to pace yourself. So don't push yourself too hard because you don't want to worsen that pain. And then also low impact exercises like cycling, swimming, or walking are all really helpful. So then just with um, healthy habits, sleep is always really important to be aware of. So it's important to prioritize sleep and prepare your body for sleep to help um, prevent yourself from feeling really fatigued, which can worsen your perception of pain. Um, so we talked about a lot of those relaxation techniques and a lot of those can be really helpful in preparing your body for sleep as well. So these are just some of the resources that I found were really helpful. So these are all apps that are free that you can download on your phone. The Breathe to Relax app was actually devel developed for the military community. And so that's a really, really nice one. They do guided diaphragmatic breathing exercises. And there's a lot of education on there about how um, stress reduction is really important to um, reduce pain. So that's a really good one. I breathe is another one with deep breathing exercises, guided meditations to help with stress and anxiety, and then also insomnia, help you get ready for sleep. And then calm and headspace. Those are pretty popular ones. Um, they have meditations on them, guided imagery and breathing exercises. Have you heard of any of these or have you used these ones? I've heard a few of these names. I think I haven't used any of them personally, but I have a few friends who have talked about Calm who have like highly recommended that as a really easy uh, app to use as well as like I know for me, if I wanted to get into some of those activities that you listed, like the deep breathing or the meditation or even the yoga or something like that, I would have nowhere, I wouldn't know where to start. I would have nothing in me that would be like, oh yeah, this makes sense. This is my next logical step. So it's really mm -hmm. cool that uh, some of my friends have talked about Calm as one of the apps that just kind of guides you through the process and gives you lots of options and kind of adapts itself to you in a really cool way. Yeah, 
Definitely. I'm the same way. I really need that. I appreciate the script and I appreciate having um, someone walk you through exactly how to do it. Yeah. Um, so those tools are all, all really helpful. Next, we have some resources at Cleveland State. So of course, the Veteran Student Success Program is really, really great. Um, they can provide counseling services and get you in touch with available resources and tools that can be helpful to you. Um, the Rec Center is another one. So we really talked about how it's important to stay active. So CSU's Rec Center offers free exercise classes. They have yoga and cycling, which those are both low on low impact, so those could be really helpful. Um, and of course, yoga incorporates mindfulness, which is another one that kind of can distract you from some of the pain you're feeling and also help you to better manage that pain. We have the American Chronic Pain Association. So this website was really helpful. They offer support groups for pain. So those are, um, those can be really helpful just to talk to someone who can relate to you and help give you advice. And then also, of course, pain management tools on there were really um, beneficial to look at too. And then finally, the VHA pain management website. So this was a really great website. They give a lot of practical examples of things that you can do to help manage pain. They give links to research. So if you wanna learn more about um, how pain can affect uh, the way you feel, behave and think. And then also they had really cool videos explaining this as well. So I found that really, really helpful. So we've covered a lot of different ways that pain can be managed today. So overall, it's really important to be honest with yourself and others about the pain that you are experiencing. It's important to advocate for yourself and your needs to people around you and to healthcare professionals. So not being afraid to seek help um, and find the tools that can help you. So the pain that you're experiencing is real and it can affect different areas of your life, but there are things that you can do to help manage it. So I hope that some of these tips and resources were helpful to you and I hope that you are able to use them moving forward. Um, PJ, thank you very much for joining us and for helping with this presentation. You're welcome, thanks for having me.